Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and a very warm welcome to Pointless, the game where you are always aiming for the lowest score. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hi, I'm Emily from London, and this is my friend Lee from South Wales. Couple number two. Hi, I'm James, and this is my friend Rob. We're from Leeds. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Hugh. This is my dad, Gareth, and we're from Reading. And finally, couple number four. Hey, I'm Kyle, and this is my girlfriend, Sally, and we're from Beckenham in Kent. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thanks very much, all of you. Very warm welcome to the show. Lovely to have you with us. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce, exploring all avenues, like an unlicensed minicab driver on his first day. It's my pointless friend, it's Richard. Hi, yeah. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Two returning pairs on the last two podiums today. Hugh and Gareth got through to the head-to-head, -head, and Sally and Carl got through to round two. And Carl, we discovered, is a wrestler. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think we spoke about it enough. No. So not really I think maybe enough. some more questions yeah, about so. that today. Don't about you think? Yeah. Unless somebody on the first two podiums has an unbelievably spectacular pastime that's better than being a <laughs> professional wrestler, uh, <laughs> then I suspect we need to talk about it. I think so. Uh, listen, we've got two good returning pairs. We've got two new pairs who I'm sure are brilliant as well. And we've got a nice little jackpot come together, yeah, haven't we? Yeah. So what a yeah. show. It's just going up and up. And it's probably going to go up during the show as well. Might do, mightn't it? Yeah, it might. That's done recently. It's been yeah. lots of pointless answers. Yeah, very exciting. Now, Gary and Brenda didn't win the jackpot, is basically what we're saying. Uh, so we're adding another £1,000 to it. So today's jackpot starts, starts off at £7,750. <laughs> right, if everyone's ready, let's play pointless. It will always be the pair with the highest score at the end of each round that gets eliminated. That's all you have to remember. Best of luck to all four pairs. Our first category this afternoon is... classical music. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many... Composers of the Telegraph's 100 greatest classical pieces of all time, as they could. Richard. Yeah, this was a list uh, compiled in July 2019 by uh, the Telegraph Classical Music Critics of the 100 greatest uh, classical pieces of all time. Simply the surname of any composer on that list. Just need the surname, unless two composers share the same surname, in which case we'll ask you to be more specific. OK. Thank you very much. Yeah, you'd like this, wouldn't you? I would be able to... Sometimes you go too obscure and they're yeah. not on that list. Yeah. So, yeah, it's tough. Tough. Um, now then, Emily, welcome to Pointless. Thank you. Um, tell us all about yourself, Emily. Um, so I'm a receptionist at a gym in London. Uh, yeah. And that is uh, how many days <laughs> a week do you it. do? Um, it depends. I'm zero hours, so sometimes seven days a week, sometimes two days a week. Do you therefore get membership in the gym as yeah. well? Yeah, yeah. So, so I've gotten to my fitness, so that's been good. Very. How long have you done that for? Uh, just over two years, I think. Fantastic. <laughs> now, um, Emily, what are you going to go for? Do you listen to classical music? Um, I, I mean, I listen to plenty, but I don't pay any attention to the composers. Composers. So okay. I literally can only think of the two probably most well-known names. So um, I'm going to go with Mozart. OK, Mozart, says Emily. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Mozart. Mozart is right. Takes you down to 49. It's not bad. Yeah, he's got three pieces on that list, uh, but they're, they're all in German, so I'm not going to try and read them out. Yeah. What's your favourite Mozart song? Uh, <laughs> what's, his, what's your favourite hit? Uh, favourite? Um, probably the Requiem. Oh, yeah, tell me about yeah, it. Yeah, nice. Love it. Yeah. Amazing. Do you, have the, you ever heard the Green Day cover version of it? No. Yeah, really no. good. No. Really good. Mozart's good. Requiem. Or the, the Piano Concerto, K466. Oh, yeah, K466. Good. Yeah, that's a good one. Boom, boom. <laughs> absolute, <laughs> absolute oh, banger. Yeah, nice. Good. Yeah. Good. Uh, James, welcome. Hello. To it's great to have you here. Thank you. Um, tell us all about yourself. So I work as a chartered accountant for um, a trust of schools in South Leeds. Very good indeed. What do you do when you're not doing your accountancy? Rob and I do a lot of uh, theatre stuff together. So uh, I perform on stage and we both write together as well, uh, musicals. I mean, that's a tremendous <laughs> thing to be doing. It's, it's fun. I mean, are you, are you doing it at sort of local Amdram level? Or uh, do, or yeah. do you well, or... we, our first one, we did local Amdram and then we got invited to um, a Noda conference and then we also did it at the Edinburgh Festival. 
Very good. Was, so yeah, can, watch this space. You, yeah. can tell, you can tell James works in musical theatre because he's got his sleeves rolled up. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the giveaway. That's, that Very is the giveaway. Good. That's yeah. the secret code. OK, <laughs> now, James, what are you going to go for? Uh, I'm going to go with Sibelius. Sibelius. Mm. Let's see if Sibelius is on that list. How many of our 100 people said Sibelius? Oh, phew. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh. oh, look at that. Stand to four. Very well done, indeed. Good, good work. Uh, yeah, he's got one thing on the list, and that's also, uh, that's, I think it might even be in Finnish. Yeah. Is it? So I'm going yeah. nowhere near that. Yeah, thank you very much indeed. Uh, now, Hugh. Hello. Remind us all about yourself. Welcome back. Uh, yeah, so I work at a uh, car manufacturer in logistics, and in my spare time, uh, doing a part time master's degree in humanitarian engineering. And yeah, I, I did, Whoa. Oh, that's yeah, just that's a minute. That's a mouthful, right? Yeah, no, but you didn't mention that before. Last time you I, just said yeah. you, were, you were just <laughs> checking nuts and bolts on cars or something. <laughs> well, that, that's my passion. So. That's your passion, cars. Yeah. And then the rest but then of it humanitarian is just... engineering. Yeah. Which basically similarly nuts and bolts, but maybe on, on ambulances. <laughs> yes, yeah, basically. It's nice. Yeah. That's, that's lovely. Well done. Good. Thank you. Uh, Hugh, what are you going to go for? Um, back, back. Batch. <laughs> what a... I know who you mean. Um, Bach. <laughs> Let's see how many of our 100 people said Bach. It's right. Look at that. Down it goes. 34 <laughs> for Bach. He's got three pieces on that list. Nice. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Sally, welcome back. Um, great to have you with us again. Remind us all about yourself. So I work in payroll for a large media company and in my space. I want to d drill down into the large <laughs> media company. It's sounding a bit anonymous at this stage. What sort of media company is it? What's it, what's it specialise in? It has massive theme parks around the world and does a lot of animation, animated <gasps> cartoons. Oh, oh, oh my only, days. only that There's one. Mice. Oh, my <laughs> mice. Days. Yes, bit of a mouse problem, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I've gotcha. Got it. Wow. 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 That's fun. Payrolling That's cool. that lot. I mean, payroll, not so fun, that but means the you, company makes it fun. That means you pay Goofy. I do. I wow. Know I can't disclose, but. Yeah, yeah. I bet he's on a fortune, <laughs> oh, Goofy. Of course he is. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, Sally, who are you going to go for? I think I'm going to go for Chopin. Chopin, says Sally. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Chopin. It's right, 49 is our high score, 4 is our low. There you are on 19. Very well done indeed. Uh, yeah, the prelude in E minor and the uh, nocturne in D flat major. Nice. Yeah, which are my two. Uh, I'd put them the other way around probably for me. For you, yeah. I yeah. prefer the nocturne to the prelude. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Richard. We are halfway through the round. Let's have a look at those scores. Four, the best score of the past. James, very well done. Hats off mm -hmm. to you. You and Robert, I think, are looking very strong at this point. Then we travel via all these other scores up to 49, where we find Emily and Lee. So, Lee, yes, a little bit of pressure on you there. Um, but I hope you know your classical music. Good luck. <laughs> We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, Kyle, welcome back. Thank you. Remind us all about yourself. Um, I work for a fitness training provider um, and I'm also a professional wrestler. Professional? How long have you been doing the professional wrestling? Um, a while. I mean, I, I started training maybe... 10, 12 years ago. I had a bit of a break in between, but originally started about 12 years ago. Maybe. And have you followed wrestling all your life? Yeah, it was like the childhood dream. So you watch it as a kid and like, I want to be like those guys. Excellent. What, do, do you have a sort of signature move? Is there anything that's your particular um, kind of... I do a lot of what they're called backbreakers. Um, Self-explanatory. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you're fighting someone else, I mean, at what stage do they think, ah, oh, OK, yeah. Carl's going to do the, he's going to do the backbreaker. Therefore, I better do the, the backbreak receiver. <laughs> I mean, how does that work? Because there's a kind of... It seems, you know, you, yeah, the other yeah. person seems, needs to know what yeah, you're going to do. Yeah, oh, you, you give them a little wink, a little, little wink. bit of a squeeze, and then... Here we yeah, go. Yeah. Thanks. Now, there you are on 19. 29 or less gets you through. Yes. Um, I've had a few names rolling around in my head, and the more I say them, I don't know if they're 
composers or artists or maybe just friends of mine. Um, <laughs> or probably just fellow wrestlers. Yeah. You know. <laughs> there are some funky names. Um, I think I'm going to play relatively safe in my head and say Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky, says Kyle. Here is your red line. Can you get below this red line with Tchaikovsky? Let's see. Very well done indeed. Danny goes to 24. 43, your total. Do you like a bit of Tchaikovsky? I do like a bit of Tchaikovsky, actually. You play, yeah. So your show yeah. on yeah. Classic FM, yeah. do you play much Tchaikovsky? We do, yeah, a lot of Tchaikovsky, actually. Very like a load. popular. Ballet is probably his most famous output. So things oh, like the yeah. Nutcracker, I love Sleeping Beauty, Ballet. Swan Lake. Swan Lake was yeah. one of his. Yeah. But he, he wrote some heartbreaking symphonies. Did he? He's a very unhappy man, Tchaikovsky. Oh, I think no. he, he poured a lot of his angst into, into his symphonies. So he's a bit like Coldplay? A very like Coldplay, yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Um, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, now, Gareth. Hello. Um, remind us all about yourself. Welcome back to Point. It's good to have you with us again. Thank you, yeah. Um, I'm a software developer. Um, my passion is uh, I've been involved in amateur theatre or amateur dramatics for about the last 30 years. So I enjoy trading the boards and uh, getting involved. In what the in your mind was the greatest Gareth role? What was the what was the one that slew him? I, th I think the the most fun was probably Jekyll and Hyde, because it was two in one. So obviously, and you were you, had, you yeah. were the central. I character. had to be. Yeah, there was no 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 stand in. I had to change. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it was great fun. Wow. And they're still uh, talking about it back in Reading. I th yeah. Yeah. Well, people still walk to the other side of the street. Yeah. When I yeah. <laughs> Um, Gareth, you're on 34. 14 or less gets okay. you through. What are you going to go for? OK. Um, I think this is a composer, I hope. Uh, Debussy. Debussy? Yeah. Says Gareth, here is your red line. Let's see if you can get below this red line with Debussy. It's right. Very well done. Look, down that goes to three. That's very strong indeed. 37, lowest score of the round so far. There. Yeah, Claude Debussy, a piece from La Mer. Mm. Mm. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, Robert. Hello. Welcome to Pointless. Good to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. OK, so I am a music teacher and a musical director from Leeds. Oh, for goodness sake. Well... You see, you're going to find yourself in the same... This is... It's not necessarily one of those areas where you want to have too much obscure knowledge. I work Remember. in um, primary schools teaching rock music. <laughs> ah, OK. Get that in early. I will get that in early, yes. Yes. <laughs> um, so, yes, writing musicals, do you do a little bit of lyrical work or do you leave that all to James? Well, um, we were quite fortunate to find each other, really, because I was always looking for someone that could write lyrics and James was always looking for someone that could write music. So. There we are. Perfect. Like Gilbert and Sullivan. There we are. <laughs> Brilliant. The budget version. The budget. Well, only for now. Only for now. Um, now, Robert, you're on four, which means okay. if you score 44 or less, you're through. So I fought at the beginning of this round, I was very strong, and then um, a lot of my answers have been kind of whittling away. So I've been left with Haydn. Haydn, yes. says Robert. Let's see how many of our 100 people went for Haydn. Here's your red line. It's, it's Haydn. <laughs> <laughs> stop, stop, stop it. There it is. There's your red line. Very well done. You are through. That's a great answer. Down it goes to nine, taking your total up to 13. Lowest score of the round. Uh, Joseph Hayden, that's yeah. his name. Joseph. But mm? yeah, Joseph. Joseph. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. I call him Joseph. Joe. Joe Hyden, yeah. <laughs> Big Joe Hyden. Where's Big Joe Hyden? Big Joe. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> there he is. He's behind the piano. Behind the piano. Yeah. There we are. Yeah. Nice. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, now, Lee. Yes. Welcome to the show. Great to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. Um, I am a works planner for a local housing association. So I look after all the trades, people, carpenters, plumbers, electricians, and do the maintenance work on properties. Very good. So you, you spend your time going around with a hard hat and a clipboard going... Unfortunately nah. not. No, I'm oh. stuck in the office. Oh, no. Part of it. But, yeah, it can be interesting. That's fine. It does sound interesting. Uh, Lee, I'm afraid you are our high scorers even before you've given your answer. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. Mozart did for you. Um, but have you got a good answer? Oh, I was actually surprised that I didn't know a few because I didn't think I did, but they've all gone. Um, I've got two left and I'll go with Vivaldi. 
Uh, the Valdi, let's see how many of our 100 say. But Valdi, I'm afraid there's no red line for you as you're the high scorers. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Well, what about that for an omission? Oh, <laughs> uh, that's a great answer. Um, clearly, didn't cut the mustard for the uh, Daily Telegraph. That scores you 100 points, takes your total up to 149. Over Valdi, I'm afraid. What would you have gone for? Wow, that's well, that's that's so throwing a your shot little. across my bows. I mean, I thought maybe you might have gone for Scarlatti or Albanoni, maybe, but um, Monteverdi. What about that? Uh, he's not on the list, I'm afraid. Oh, no. I'm not getting not on the list, not getting in. No, no. Monteverdi. There we go. Um, uh, Benjamin Britton. Benjamin Britton would have scored you five points. Okay. He's got three right. points. He's got three pieces on the list. Uh, Charles Stanford. Sorry, I'll stop doing this. Should we take a look at the yeah, points? Yeah, I think we should. Yeah. And you, after each one, you go. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I just say pretend they're all yeah. mine. Yeah. Um, here we go. Uh, Aaron Copeland, yeah. uh, Charles Hubert Parry, Clara Schumann, uh, Engelbert Humperdinck, not that one. Uh, Henry Purcell, Kurt Vile. You could have had uh, Leo de Libre, uh, Manuel de Falla, and Thomas Tallis as well. Well done if you said that. Thanks very much indeed, Richard. Uh, so we are at the end of our first round. We have to say goodbye to our first pair. And I'm afraid, Lee and Emily, you are that pair on 149 <laughs> with the high score. I'm sorry. Um, you've barely been here, but you'll be back next time. And we'll yeah. look forward to that very much. Meantime, thank you so much, Lee and Emily. Yeah. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Very well done. Everybody made it through that round. James and Robert, you are our lowest combined scorers. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gareth, there you are, our lowest individual scorer. Very strong indeed. Anyway, best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two this afternoon is... A-list destinations. Can you all decide in your pairs who wants to go first, who wants to go second, and whoever's going first? Please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... Cities beginning with the letter A, Richard. Yeah, simply uh, six clues on each pass, and the answers are all world cities beginning with the letter A. Thank you very much indeed. So, we are looking for these world cities, and here is our first board of six clues. Tamaki Makauro is the Maori name for this former capital of New Zealand. Notable for its bridge, this French city was a papal residence in the 14th century. Greek capital city, the location of UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Acropolis. This city replaced Lagos as Nigeria's capital, capital and largest city in the US state of Georgia and host of the 1996 Olympic Games and city in northern India that is home to the Taj Mahal. I'll read those all again. Tamaki Makauro is the Maori name for this former capital of New Zealand. Notable for its bridge, this French city was a papal residence in the 14th century. Greek capital city, the location of UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Acropolis. This city replaced Lagos as Nigeria's capital, capital and largest city in the US state of Georgia and host of the 1996 Olympic Games and city in northern India that is home to the Taj Mahal. There we are. Robert. So it's... Not my strongest category, but there is one that I definitely know. So I'm going to have to play that one, I think. So I will go capital and largest city in the US state of Georgia, uh, Atlanta. Atlanta, says Robert. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Atlanta. Atlanta's right. Not bad. There we are, 17 for Atlanta. <laughs> Shows how much has changed in British sport, though. That was 1996, and Britain won one gold medal in those games. That was Pinson and Redgrave, which I'm aware is two, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Richard. Now, Hugh. Yeah, um, I was going to go for that one, and now I've come unstuck because I didn't have a plan B. I think the third one's pretty obvious. The fourth one I'm, is kind of a tip of my tongue, but I don't want to guess. Uh, so the top one... Uh, Auckland. OK, Auckland, says Hugh. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that for the New Zealand city. It is Auckland. 17 is our only score at the moment, and you pass it down to 11. Very well done indeed, Hugh. Good. <laughs> yeah, superseded this capital by Wellington. It's the capital of New Zealand now. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Kyle, this board's all yours. Do you want to talk us through those... Unanswered ones. Um, I, I know a couple. I mean, the Greek capitals, Athens. I feel like I know the Indian one, but I, I just can't think of it. Um, 
I'm going to go for the city that replaced Lagos as Nigeria's capital, and it's Abuja. Abuja, yeah. says Kyle. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Abuja. Abuja is right. Well, 17 is our high score, 11 is our low. And you pass that down to two with Abuja. Very well done indeed, Kyle. Great, great score there. Well played, Kyle. Yeah, it's a, it's a planned city in the middle of Nigeria, Abuja. It took its name from a nearby town, which then had to rename itself. Oh, that's annoying. That's a, it is a bit annoying, isn't it? Oh, what, are, what do they call themselves? Uh, Seleja. Fair enough. Um, so, so, everyone knew the Greek capital city. Well, everyone here did. In our 100, only 33 did. It is Athens. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know the city uh, where the I Taj Mahal is? Agra. Yeah, absolutely. That would have scored you eight points. And the uh, bridge? Is the uh, Pont d'Avignon. Oui, sur le Pont d'Avignon. And that would have scored three points. So, Abuja, Carl's the best answer on the board. Well played. Thank you very much indeed. OK, well, we're halfway through the round. Let's have a look at those scores. Two. Fabulous work over there, Kyle. Then we travel up via 11. Not bad as well. Uh, up to 17, where we find Robert and James. James, let's hope you find a nice low-scoring answer on the next board <laughs> to keep you in the running. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, let's put six more clues to world cities beginning with A on the board, and here they are. A port on the Gulf of Guinea. It is Ghana's capital. European city where the Rice Museum and the Anne Frank House are located. Capital of South Australia, named after the wife of King William IV. Ethiopia's capital, containing the burial place of Emperor Haile Selassie. Belgian city that hosted the Olympic Games in 1920. And city on Scotland's North Sea coast that is nicknamed the Granite City. I'm going to read those all again. A port on the Gulf of Guinea, it is Ghana's capital. European city where the Rice Museum and the Anne Frank House are located. Capital of South Australia, named after the wife of King William IV. Ethiopia's capital, containing the burial place of Emperor Haile Selassie. Belgian city that hosted the Olympic Games in 1920. And city on Scotland's North Sea coast that is nicknamed the Granite City. There we are. Now, Sally, what are you going to go for there? Oh, it's not a great board for me, so Carl has done me a favour. Um, oh, it's about whether I go for one I know or a risky one. Oh, I think I'm going to go for the last one and I'm going to say Aberdeen. Aberdeen, says Sally, here is your red line. Now, let's see how far down the column, how close to that red line can we get with Aberdeen? Not bad, 28. <laughs> Takes your total up to 30. Uh, there's a college in Aberdeen which is the second largest granite building in the world. Wow. Yeah. Behind a big granite building in Spain, which is mm. bigger. Mm. That's the biggest one. That's the biggest. Yeah. Um, OK. Gareth, now you have to score 18 or less. OK. Um, so my daughter has been to Ethiopia, so I'm going to guess she'll kill me if I'm wrong. Addis Ababa. Addis Ababa. Here is your red line. Can you get below this red line with Addis Ababa? Let's find out. It's right. Yep. Very well done indeed. 11. Exactly the same as Hugh's score. Take your total up to a nice even 22. That's a lovely answer. Yeah, Addis Ababa is the third best named um, capital city in the world behind yeah. uh, Pyongyang and Ouagadougou. <laughs> oh, yes. Bandar Seri Begawan comes in somewhere. That's pretty good. Yeah, 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 you're right. But Addis Ababa, that is great. Uh, OK, now, James, we have a contest here. <laughs> we have to get a score of 12 or less. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we say goodbye. Yes, uh, goodbye, I think, is uh, <laughs> the most likely option. Do you want to just stage. talk us through that board, do some thinking out loud? Um, yeah, I, there's really only one that I know. I mean, I feel like I should know the wife of William IV, but I thought it was Mary. <laughs> so I'll, I'll have to go with Amsterdam for the second one. OK, Amsterdam, yeah. says James. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Amsterdam. Here is your red line. Amsterdam is right. That goes down to 32, which takes your total up to 49. Let's fill the rest of this board in, shall we? Do you know the, uh, the capital of Ghana is Accra? That would have scored you six points. The capital of South Australia? Is Adelaide. Adelaide, yeah. 
would have scored 16, and the Belgian city? Antwerp. Antwerp. And that would have scored nine. So the best answer on the board is Accra. Very well done if you said that. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we are at the end of our second round, which means we have to say goodbye to another pair. And James and Robert, you are that second pair. <laughs> you'll be back. We'll be back. <laughs> you'll be back, and I'm sure you'll take it much further next time. Yeah. But meantime, thank you very much indeed, Robert thank and so James. But for the remaining two pairs, it is now time for our head to head. Congratulations, Hugh and Gareth, Sally and Kyle. You're now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £7,750. But before we play the head-to-head, -head, shall we see if we can't put some more money into that jackpot with our jackpot booster round? A little bonus round for fun. OK, you've got to find some pointless answers here. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many species of dolphin as they could, Richard. Yeah, as always, two pointless answers up there, two incorrect answers as well, though. £250 for each pointless answer you can find. OK. Can you identify the two pointless dolphins amongst this list of potential dolphins? Hourglass, Rissos, Hogan's, Fraser's, Miami, Spinner. There we are. Two of those dolphins are not dolphins at all. Four of them are, and of those four, two are pointless. Feel free to confer as a four. Miami's a, a red herring because of the yeah, football, of the football, football team. team. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I think Hourglass is definitely not. I don't know, I, I feel something is spinner. 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 I, I, I yeah. would say Spinner. Yeah. And then guess spinner. that one of the named ones is someone's... Yeah. Or Hogan's. Yeah, let's yeah. get kind yeah, of rings Hogan, out for yeah. me. Yeah. Hogan and Spinner. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. OK, Hugh and Gareth, you'll go first. Can you name a pointless dolphin from that list? Hogan's? Hogan's. Hogan's. OK, Hogan's. Let's see, is Hogan's a pointless dolphin? Oh, no, bad luck. Bad luck. Hogan's is not a dolphin at all. Sally and Kyle. Are we going to go for Spinner? Yeah, Spinner. Spinner. Yep. Let's see if Spinner is a pointless dolphin. It's definitely a dolphin. If this goes all the way down to zero, it'll add 250 quid to the jackpot. Oh, bad luck. Six there. <laughs> I think the jackpot was big enough already. I think it was, prote <laughs> it was protecting itself there from any extra weight being placed on it. Um, you're quite right. You spotted the other incorrect answer there, which is Miami. Miami Dolphins being an NFL team. Uh, Paul Hogan was in Flipper, the film. That's uh, where Hogan's comes from. Now, of those, two of them are pointless answers. What do you reckon? Well, yeah, I mean, Hourglass, nice. which it's we dismissed, not, for, the, for the <laughs> same reason that you would have dismissed it, you might think it might be pointless. No, that's the one that scores a point. It's the uh, other two, Rizzo's Rizzo's. and Fraser's are the, uh, okay. are the pointless answers. Very well done if you said either of those. Well, bad luck, you weren't able to find any pointless answers there. But I think we haven't lost anything, it's fine. Um, let's play the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> the first pair to win two questions will be playing for the jackpot. And you're now allowed to confer. Best of luck to both pairs. Here comes our first head-to-head -head question, and it's all about famous Jodies, Richard. Five pictures now of famous Jodies, but who are these Jodies? Wow. Mm. How many Jodies are there? Well, there's going to be five on the board. Five. <laughs> I know, I know. So there must be at least I'm, five. I'm concerned about my Jodie knowledge. Oh, yeah. um, OK, let's reveal the five Jodies. Here they come. We've got A. B. C. D. And E. OK. Now, Hugh and Gareth, you're our golden couple, so you get to go first. That's the dog. Yeah. yeah. Which is the one I said. Yeah. Oh, hang on, yeah. Um, would you go for C? Was that something no. that you'd be confident about? <laughs> no. We know that one, don't we? Yeah? yeah. Go on. C? Yeah. Jodie Whittaker, C? OK, C, Jodie Whittaker. Now then, Sally and Kyle, can you talk us through the other Jodies? <sighs> you know the first one. No, I, oh. I do, but I don't. It's a supermodel, well, isn't it? Obviously, Jodie Foster. Yeah, J he's Jodie Foster. And then B, she was in Killing Eve, but I can't remember. I can't remember her surname. That she's yeah. a supermodel. Jody the first Kidd. one. Yeah, Jodie Kidd. 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 
Okay, we'll do that. We're going to go with Jodie Kidd for A. Okay, A, Jodie Kidd. So we have Jodie Whittaker for C and Jodie Kidd for A. Hugh and Gareth said Jodie Whittaker for C. Let's see how many of our 100 said that. Jodie Whittaker is absolutely right. Takes us down to 31. <laughs> Sally and Carl, meanwhile, have gone for Jodie Kidd for A. Let's see how many of our 100 said Jodie Kidd. Jodie Kidd is right. And that goes to 38, which means very well done, Hugh and Gareth, after one question, you're up 1 0. Uh, and you're absolutely right, B is uh, the actor from Killing Eve. Jodie Comer. Jodie Comer, yeah, very well played. That would have scored you 19 points. D, another actor, Jodie Turner Smith. And she's a pointless answer, so very well done if you said that. And we were all waiting for E to turn up, weren't we? Of course, all yeah. the way through the round. And Jodie Foster would have scored you 60 points. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, here comes your second question. Sally and Carl, you have to win this one to stay in the game, so best of luck. Our second question in the head-to-head -head is all about words added to the Oxford English Dictionary in 2019. Richard. Yep, we're going to show you five definitions of uh, words that were added to the dictionary, as well as alternate letters of their name. Can you tell us what these words or phrases are, please? Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five words and the clues to them, and here they are. In basketball, to score by jumping up and thrusting the ball down through the basket. S-A-D-N. A political situation that is characterised by a series of blunders and miscalculations. O-N-S-A-B-E. To calm down, to take it easy. C-I-L-X, used to indicate the speaker is indifferent to the matter at hand, W-A-E-S, and a weapon resembling a sword but having a destructive beam of light in place of a blade, L-G-T-A-R. I'll read those again. In basketball, to score by jumping up and thrusting the ball down through the basket, S-A-D-N. A political situation that is characterised by a series of blunders and miscalculations, O-N-S-A-B-E. To calm down, to take it easy, C-I-L-X. Used to indicate the speaker is indifferent to the matter at hand, W-A-E-S and a weapon resembling a sword, but having a destructive beam of light in place of a blade, L-G-T-A-R. There we are, Sally and Carl will go first. Okay. Um, I think we're going to go for the third one down as chillax. OK, chillax, say Sally and Kyle. Now then, Hugh and Gareth, can you talk us through the rest? Top one, slam dunk. Yep. Bottom one, lightsaber. Yeah. Yeah, light, lightsaber. I can slam dunk small. Yeah. Uh, yeah, lightsaber, bottom OK, one. you're going to go for lightsaber for the bottom one. So we have chillax and we have lightsaber. Sally and Kyle went for chillax for calm down, take it easy. Let's see how many of our 100 said that. Chillax is right. 44. <laughs> Hugh and Gareth, meanwhile, have gone for lightsaber for the weapon resembling a sword. How many of our 100 people said lightsaber? He's right. Ooh! Ooh, look at that! Look at that! Lightsaber down to 28. <laughs> which means, very well done indeed, Hugh and Gareth. After only two questions, you're straight through to the final 2-0. Yeah, very well played. I think some Star Wars fans might spell it E-R at the end, but it's R-E in oh. the dictionary. Uh, the basketball one... Slam dunk. Is slam dunk. I don't know why it took so long to get in the dictionary. Maybe as one word with that hyphen, maybe it took it that long. 24 points for that. Now, these other two oh. are used to indicate the speaker is indifferent to the matter at hand. What evs. What evs. I would spell it with a Z at the end, what evs. Yeah, but, surely. Uh, but there you are. Six points for that. And this one it's comes from the thick of it. Omnishambles. An omnishambles, yep as in everything has gone wrong. Three points for that. Very well done if you said that. If you didn't say it, then what ifs? <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round. Sally and Kyle, I'm afraid it is you. It's been great having you on the show. Thank you so much for playing. You've been absolutely fantastic. We've had some brilliant slam-dunk answers from you. <laughs> um, but I'm afraid this is where we say goodbye. But thank you, Sally and Kyle.
lot for Hugh and Gareth. It is now time for our pointless fun. <laughs> Huge congratulations, Hugh and Gareth. You've fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now get a chance to play for our pointless jackpot, and at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £7,750. <laughs> I mean, that's a colossal jackpot. It would be lovely to send that back with you to Reading. First, though, you've got to find a category that you can answer. What's going to suit? Rugby. It's got to be, <laughs> a, yeah, yeah. Welsh <laughs> rugby <laughs> would be good. Uh, OK, uh, anything and else? We share similar interests, so if... Yeah, I think we might do well. As long as the category comes up. Yeah, a bit of geography, maybe? Yeah. Film? Less okay. so for me. Oh, yeah. yeah, he has more time than I have, but... OK, well, let's see. There'll be things on that board. I hope that you both like the look of. Uh, today's list is as follows. The US Vice President, Booker Prize nominees, Acting Emilies and Decades of Grand National winners. <laughs> what do we think? <laughs> Booker Prize could be quite open. Yeah, yeah. Act. How many Emily's do you know? There's not very many, it has to be said. Grand National? Um, if we go back far enough, I suppose, yeah. I feel like I might not be any help. No, that's... Yeah. Um, well, that Vice President. These are not good, are they? <laughs> <laughs> Can we reshuffle them? <laughs> yeah. So, so I think Booker Prize or Emily's? So Booker Prize nominees... You, are you comfortable with no. acting, Emily? <laughs> I'm not comfortable with any of them. Uh, do decades of grand national winners. You think? Yeah. yeah I can't help on that, though. <laughs> Should we do Booker Prize nominees? Oh. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Booker Prize nominees. Yeah. OK, very best of luck. We're looking for any book written by any of the following that has been nominated for the Booker Prize from 1969 all the way through to 2019, please, under its various guises. Looking for any Ian McEwan novel that's been shortlisted, any Iris Murdoch novel, or any Salman Rushdie novel. So any novel by one of those authors shortlisted for the Booker Prize. Very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed. Now, as always, you've got up to a minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot is for just one of your answers to be pointless. Are you ready? No. <laughs> yes, we're not okay, going to put we're going to put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. I think we'd be better off making up cool book names. Uh, no, come on, let's have some rush to you've heard. <laughs> Obviously, this talent versus, but that is not going to. Have you got any answers? Nothing. Really? Okay. I didn't really know what Booker <laughs> Prize was. <laughs> let's make up book, uh, cool book names. We've only got Sam. Um, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Iris Murdoch. I've seen a film about her. I've seen a film about her, but um, it wasn't about her writing anything. You got anything? Oh, I've got one, but I know that's not going to be a pointless answer. Ian McEwan. Ten seconds left. I think we should have chosen this. Oh, yeah, it's very well saying that now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, OK, I'm really sorry. That minute has now run out. Yeah, it has, so it? you're now going to have to give us okay. some answers. It sounds to me like you're either going to have to just think very, very hard or make up some names. We're going to have to, aren't we? Yeah. OK, what's a cool book name? Um, well, we're going to have to do I mean, Samuel Rushdie's Satanic, the Satanic Verses, although I, I can't OK, should we do that one? The we're Satanic do Verses. That one. OK, one. there the we are. There's one. Two. So we've got that one, we need two more. Cider with Rosie. OK, for which author? Um, Ian McEwan. OK, Cider with Rosie. And the third one? one? Well, I'm, I'll just be guessing. Go on. Um, <laughs> um, say one, any... Uh, <laughs> never book you've read. <laughs> Whispering Nights. Whispering Nights. That's what I call a book. OK, there we are. Uh, oh, which author for Whispering Nights, <laughs> by the way? Uh, Iris. Iris Murdoch, okay, for Whispering Nights. Okay, of the three, do you want to nominate one just to put last for fun? Uh, Satanic Verses. Satanic Verses, we'll put last. Um, should we put Whispering Nights first and then side it with Rosie in the middle? <laughs> there we are, marvellous. Okay, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, and here they are. We have got Whispering Nights, we've got Sided with Rosie, and we've got the Satanic Verses. Well, very, very best of luck. <laughs> um, 
If you were to win that money today, um, seven thousand seven hundred and fifty pounds. I mean, that's a that's an exciting jackpot. What would you like to do with it, Hugh? You first. I think I'd explore literature. <laughs> Just read. Yeah, <laughs> a lot more. <laughs> Gareth, uh, <laughs> uh, I would uh, I would spend it on a on a bike. Um, cycling is my other passion as well. So yes. Excellent. <clears throat> okay. Well, you never know. You never know. Often you do, but sometimes you don't. Uh, <laughs> Whispering Nights is your first answer. In this case, we're looking for Iris Murdoch novels, shortlisted for the Booker Prize. Let's see what happens when we say Whispering Nights. <laughs> no. <laughs> no surprises there. You've gone for Cider with Rosie. You were under pressure. You had to come up with something. You've gone for Cider with Rosie for Ian McEwan novels, shortlisted for the Booker Prize. Let's see what happens when we say Cider with Rosie. <laughs> no. There we are. Again, no surprises there. But we now move on to firmer ground. You've gone for the Satanic Verses. We're now looking for Salman Rushdie novels nominated for the Booker Prize. For £7,750, how many people said the Satanic Verses? Is it pointless? It's right. <laughs> we just have to see how far down the column we get here. If this goes down to zero, you leave here with £7,750. Oh. Bad luck. <laughs> 22. 22. Well, listen, you found one answer there, and it was a decent score, but I'm afraid you didn't manage to find the all-important pointless answer, so I'm afraid you don't win today's jackpot. But you are taking home today's pointless trophy, so very, very well done for that, and you've played incredibly well across two shows, so don't forget that. It is an object lesson, though, sometimes listen to your dad, because he was sitting there going, well, I do Grand National winners, because I, I, I know a bit about that. You go, no, 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 we want to do something we both can do. Let's do Booker Prize winners, and then say, oh, I've never heard of the Booker Prize. <laughs> so, instead of doing one that... <laughs> one of you knew a load about, you decided to do one that neither of you knew anything about at all. Yeah. But that, Gareth, is the confidence of youth, <laughs> isn't it? Exactly true. And uh, I imagine you'll find situations where that's useful. It just wasn't on this particular occasion. <laughs> um, shall we take a look at the winning uh, answers here? Not many, actually. Uh, Ian McEwan first. You could have had Amsterdam, it's a wonderful novel, Black Dogs or The Comfort of Strangers. Iris Murdoch, three answers for her as well. Bruno's Dream, The Book and the Brotherhood and The Nice and the Good. And only one pointless answer for Salman Rushdie. All of his other answers uh, scored points. And his pointless answer was The Moor's Last Sign, which incidentally also won the Grand National in 1981. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much indeed, Richard. And thank you, Hugh and Gareth. I'm sorry we didn't win our jackpot today. That will therefore roll over onto the next show when we will be playing for £8,750. <laughs> Join us then, see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>